Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back. I'm one of your co-hosts, Rico Borrego. I am your other co-host, Tony Borrego. And this is the podcast known as Relatively Sound, where you're probably listening to us, whether it's on Spotify or Apple Music or even YouTube, you're listening to us. And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about listening, but not to podcasts. We're going, to be, we're going to be talking about how we listen to music, whether that be through CDs, cassette tapes, vinyl, streaming services, live music, listening through headphones, through speakers. We're just going to talk, kind of have an open discussion, explain to you how we both listen to music, our similarities, our differences. And, you know, we definitely want to hear your guys' um, w- different ways that you guys listen to music. Um, but I'll just kick it off real quick. Um, listening to music for me, it is my favorite hobby of all time. Um, I listen to music every single day. Um, I probably listen to music too much. One could argue, but I say there's never enough time to listen to music. Um, I listen to music a lot of different ways. Um, I do have a huge record collection, almost 600 records. You know, I spin vinyl almost every day, but I also, because it's so convenient, I do stream, listen to music on my phone. Back in the day though, before vinyl, I used to listen to CDs. I had a huge CD collection and I love live music. There's a lot of ways, but there's, to me, there's different kind of times to which I want to listen to music in specific formats. Um, But what about you, Tony? What, when it comes to listening to music, what are your preferred methods? Well, I totally agree. I think that each different method offers a different experience. Um, for me, like right now, I'm getting back into vinyl. Um, listening to vinyl is great, but it's definitely something that you kind of, in a way, have to set up time for. If I was listening on my headphones or off my phone speaker, I can like, walk around I could go outside you know I don't have to worry about like missing out on the record um you know if you're you know if you're really trying to listen to it um you know or like at work for example you know I can use headphones but I've really been into vinyl lately because you know I can stay in my room um you know really enjoy a record and you know I can like clean or just kind of sit down with it and um listening on speakers it just there's sort of a liveliness that fills the room. Um, But I would say for a long time, I would have said that my favorite way to listen to music would be listening with headphones, just laying down. I like to listen a lot before bed, so I guess kind of in the dark, I suppose, not to sound dramatic. But I just really love, love doing that because you get so much clarity through the headphones. The panning feels, you know, the panning is a lot more noticeable. You can hear the words better. Um, how do you feel about headphones? Are, are you pro headphones or pro speaker? Because I do know some people that are kind of divided with that. Well, I'll tell you this. When it comes to headphones, I mean, first of all, I just use mostly my AirPods, you know, not to flex. But um, I love my AirPods. I got them a couple of years ago when I was working somewhere where I could listen to music. And they're just so great. I love the different functions um, with them. But I do have a nice, you know, over the years headphones that I use for um, my turntable when I'm listening to records at night, not trying to be too loud. And obviously those have a more of a full sound, but the the AirPods are really nice. Um, But when it comes to headphones, I love to use them when I'm listening to new music for the first time, be it whether it's a new song from a band I love, an artist I love, or whether it's music from a band artist, I have no idea. I've never listened to them before. I like to have new music be heard through headphones first, just because I feel like when it comes to production, production, you can really hear little things with the headphones. Where with speakers, even if you have amazing speakers, sometimes I just feel like I just can't notice things as much. And obviously on a first listen, you're going to miss a lot of things anyway. But like, for example, uh, the recording of this episode, the previous night, um, actually last night, right? Valentine's Day. Well, I I guess technically today, this morning, Ben Folds released uh, a new song and I listened to it with my headphones because 
I just feel like I'm more in the zone when I'm listening to new music that way. Um, but down the road, now that I've heard the song, you know, a handful of times with my headphones, you know, on streaming, I'm going to probably listen to it. I, I have a setup with my turntable with my receiver where it's Bluetooth so I can connect my phone to it and use my speakers. And then I've already pre-ordered his new album. So when it gets released in June and I get the album, um, that'll be the other way I listen to it. Um, but yeah, so headphones, I like a lot. And I, but I especially like it when I'm listening to music or when I'm like you were mentioning walking around when I'm doing chores around the house or I go for a walk or I'm on and about, you know, at a store and I want to, you know, headphones are perfect. I'm not definitely not one of those people that walk around with like my, you know, listening to music out loud through my phone speaker. Um, those type of people are the worst. But through your beats by Dre. Yeah, no, ain't doing that. But um, yeah, I, when you listen to music, yeah, do you normally do headphones? Yeah, I, I, I will say actually, um, today when you told me to listen to the uh, the new Ben Fold song, I did, and I did it from my my Mac speakers because I was already on it. Um, and, and granted, these Mac speakers are much better than any other like computer speakers I used or my phone speaker. My Mac's still new to me, so I was just you know. So I, I didn't see the quality as a concern, but you you know, you mentioning listening to songs with headphones for the first time, I do think you're right that I do think that's probably the most focused way to really, um, you know, get the most out of the song. And because it's just not like, oh, I've never heard this album. Let me put it on in the background. It's more like, oh, like I like Ben Folds and the work he does. I really want to know what this song really sounds like, what it's all about, especially if, you know, um, like you did, if you're going to pre-order the album or whatnot. Uh, yeah. I will. I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say that um, to go back to a point you made earlier about the about vinyl is you do have to kind of set up time. I know what you mean by that. Like, you know, if even if you have your turntable set up in like your living room and you're doing chores around the house, obviously, you know, even if you're blasting it through your speakers, it's not traveling with you the same way as you listen to with headphones. And that's like the that's probably the worst part about vinyl is that is not really portable and to the people who use portable turntable um like crosley little um suitcase uh, record comes. players just don't please just don't if, you, if you're going to spend money and time into buying records please purchase even just a somewhat cheap startup actual good quality turntable please do i'm not trying to you know gatekeep anyone you know, I mean, it's about having fun, but you're going to actually damage your records if you're using those little Crosley suitcase turntables. Um, so I just would not recommend it. But one of the reasons I don't like to listen to like new music on vinyl for the first time is because you never know. You sometimes can get a bad record, even if it's just brand new, just made at, you know, the, pro the you know, the place where they make the records. You can get like a bad copy. It can come warped. It could come really scratched already. It can come dirty. And if you're not cleaning them beforehand, you put the needle down and it sounds terrible. And you might think, oh, that's the song. Is that the production? You know, is that the engineering? No, it could just, just be the, you know, so even though like I do think with, you know, the problem, like someone like Neil Young, he hates streaming because he just hates the quality. And I agree to some degree, but as long as that, like an album or song isn't compressed, streaming it sounds good. If you're using good speakers or good headphones, most streaming services, especially if you use something like Tidal, which I know they have way uh, more higher quality um, files, um, you they could sound great. So I like to listen to music, you know, through streaming, just because I know I'm going to hear it as clear as possible. Vinyl, well, speaking of listening to it clearly, um, take a lot of like old records. Um, like I like a lot of like Andy Williams stuff and whatnot. Like, they're not, like, repressing those. So if you're going to listen to it on a record, it's going to be some old, super staticky, you know, record that may be a little warped or skips a lot, you know. But if I listen to that with headphones, you know, streaming, it's going to sound so much more clear. Um, and you could argue that kind of the static, the um, the wear and tear on the records does add atmosphere. And it definitely does. And I still do listen to those on record. But, for example, if I were to try to learn the song... Or learn any song, you know, I'm going to stream instead of vinyl. It just doesn't have that same functionality. 
Um, so it really is just different experiences and you can almost use these different platforms as tools almost. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I remember hearing, I don't remember who it was. I, I want to say it was either Mike McCready or, or Jeff Ament from Pearl Jam. Like when they were learning bass or guitar, they would take um, their record of the song they were trying to learn and they'd have it set up where they would on the receiver, turn it to where you're just hearing the one speaker isolated and they would find this, they would find the side in which like the, you know, bass was panned. So then when they turned off the one speaker, they could really hear the bass part and that's how they would learn mm. it. Cause this was back before, you know, you could go on the internet and find tabs, you know, to learn these songs. So uh, you're right as, as a, you know, f a functional thing, records are great in that sense. And having technology with speakers and, you know, being able to, like, you know, change the panning and stuff, that's fantastic. Um, but this, we're, right now we're kind of talking, like, on technical terms. Uh, I want to bring up a subject you kind of mentioned. You said one of the ways you used to, like, listening to music and you still do is, like, just laying down by yourself, having a song on your headphones. And you said you do it before you go to sleep. I've been doing that a lot more recently. Um, I have been having, a, I have a really weird sleep schedule right now. So I've been staying up late pretty often and to kind of calm myself down, you know, at the end of the night, I've been listening to rec, uh, to not records, but to like a playlist of kind of quiet music on my headphones. Um, and I, 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 I'm curious, I do it like to kind of, you know, like I said, zone myself out. I, pl I usually have a playlist of like just someone singing with a guitar or piano, right? We're like kind of quiet, soft. It can be happy. It can be sad. It can be either. Um, is that why you like to listen to it that way? Or is it, is it for another experience? Well, I think it depends. Um, a lot of the times it's just kind of to just kind of clear my mind, I suppose, just before bed, kind of wind down. Um, Especially like if you had a long day and you're tired, so you just want to lay in bed, but also, you know, you haven't quite fully decompressed, your mind's still thinking about things. So I think it can be really nice in that way just to kind of take some deep breaths, listen to some music you like. Um, additionally, too, you know, like, you know, if you're having like an emotionally tough day, too, it can be really nice just to kind of connect with the song kind of in your own privacy. Um and I, I think ultimately, it's just it's just a good way to wind down, really. You know, I was doing it for a while, like almost every night, and I was enjoying it. And then kind of once again, I kind of really started like listening to records because it's kind of like a kind of a bedtime routine now. You know, before bed, I'll go ahead and whether it's me just doing last minute cleaning my room or whether it's me just kind of like even texting because I can text and listen to a record at the same time, you know. I kind of set apart that time oh, just to chill that out. I, <laughs> I I can multitask, um, but I actually do like the aspect of setting, you know, setting apart time to do that. And and really, I guess I am setting apart time to lay in bed and listen to music before I sleep. Um, but yeah, I think they definitely just off. They're just different experiences, and this is just between streaming and vinyl. This is not even including CD or for those veterans cassettes. I'm not yeah, sure what else you listen to music from. Radio. There we go. Well, yeah, it's probably it's a good point to bring up in the sense that, like, you know, when I listen to music, it's usually like in the evening, I'll put a record on and I like to read while I, I listen to music. And I know some people can't. Some people like just have trouble listening to something and reading it. Some people need silence, and I totally understand that. Um and but I, I for whatever reason I like to read and listen to music at the same time. Um, I I find it's it's it depends on my mood. Like even when I pick an album when I sit down to read, sometimes I'll just pick a, uh, an album at random, whether it's an artist I haven't heard in a while or an album I haven't heard in a while. But sometimes it's based on my mood. And like for example, when I'm doing chores, and I think you're like this, you try to pick an album that's maybe more upbeat, that kind of like you know you know, kind of gets you going, you know, if it's like a rock album, something kind of heavy or something more upbeat that like kind of gets the blood flowing and, or if you're like, if you're working out, you know, I don't really work out, but 
I know people like have, you know, playlists and stuff they listen to when they're working out. Um, so it is kind of depend sometimes on my mood, like what I want to listen to. Am I listening to something sad? Or am I listening to something angry, something more upbeat, something happy? Um, but another thing I kind of wanted to bring up, and this could be its own separate episode, so we won't get too much into it, but you and I definitely, I would say we're album people. We're album men. Like we like to listen to someone's album, a band or an artist, the full thing from beginning to end without skipping songs. At least I don't. I assume you're the same way, right? Like you try not to skip songs. You listen to the album front front to end, right? Okay. I, I did go through a slight phase where I got really into the Spotify. Oh, here's my like songs. Let me shuffle them. But, but um, given my job that, you know, I've had for a few months now, I've gotten back into listening to full albums. But whenever I did listen to a full album, I definitely didn't skip the songs on the album. I listened to the whole thing. Um, and I think a lot of the times it, you know, well, you know, some artists are like, oh, the album's meant to be listened to front to back. And whether that's because they put some maybe like transitional pieces or there's like some sort of thematic connection between them. Um, I think that can be, you know, something you gain only from listening to the album front to back. But e even just, you know, if the album doesn't really matter if you listen to it in, in you know, in the order. I think it's still kind of nice just to kind of get into the song, get into the, you know, because each album is kind of like a, a pain, you know, like a moment in time captured, you know, so you listen to a batch of songs from an artist, you listen to kind of what they're thinking, what they're feeling. And I just feel like it kind of makes the song a little more, have a little more character, a little more personality on it. Um, I'm on, do, do you kind of see it the same way? Well, why, yes. why do you like listening to full albums? Well, and I should point out, there's no wrong or, or right way to whether you're listening to an album or you're listening to a playlist or just, you know, random songs. Because, for example, I am a full album person and I listen to full albums for a couple of reasons. One, when I listen to like a band, I like to listen to like more than one song from them at like, you know, in a row, which is what an album is, you know, like I like if I sit down and I'm like, oh, I want to listen to you know, REM, I want to listen to Neil Young. Like I want to listen to them for like 45 minutes to an hour. Right. And which is an album. Um, but you know, a lot of people don't like to do that. You know, um, my girlfriend, Lindsay, she, she's more of a playlist person. She has her own playlist. She listens to on streaming where, you know, she goes through all the artists she likes and puts all like her favorite songs from the playlist and it just hits random. And that's how she listens to music. And then sometimes kind of like like you were mentioning with like Spotify, she'll find songs she's been really listening to on repeat a lot. And Spotify will make playlists where it has all those songs in one little playlist, right? And that's kind of nice too, especially if it's like newer music, something that just came out like a week ago, or just a song you discovered that you were like really into. And that's great too. And you know, when a song first gets released, it's not usually attached to an album yet. You know, it, it is attached to an album, but it, the album's not released yet. It's like this new Ben Folds song. I'm going to listen to it over the next like, couple of weeks whenever I, you know, walking around, doing stuff around the house or out and about, and I need to have music playing. I'll do that because sometimes I don't have time for a full album. You know, it kind of depends too. Like sometimes you only have time for like three or four songs and then you got to go do something where you can't listen to music. Um, so, so, there, so you're, there, you're kind of, you're reasoning why some people like listening, you know, oh, I only really like these songs from the artists. These are the ones I listen to the most. It's yeah. almost also a reason to listen to a full album. Well, I would uh, agree. For example, you know, if like if I were, if I wanted to listen to the Beatles, you know, I wouldn't want to just shuffle all the Beatles songs because, you know, maybe I don't want to hear something from their first few records. Maybe I don't want to hear the White Album. Um, only a slight diss there. Um, so I might want to listen to like, oh, Rubber Soul. I love that type of Beatles songwriting that, you know, so I like that batch of songs because, you know, that's what I like from the band. I don't love all their stuff, but. So I think in a way, I mean, I guess it's just kind of how you view music. You know, but we it, like it, certain albums. Some people just see it song to song. Yeah, because it depends. Because like, I do think some people like, like our mom, um, she is also kind of more, I would say, like a playlist person where she doesn't necessarily listen to albums a lot, um, I would say. And I think she does that because like, there's just some songs by a band, you know, pick even one of her favorite bands. Like if you picked, you know, Pearl Jam or the Killers, you know, like 
there's just songs by those bands that she does not like to where she never really wants to hear them. And I obviously, even my favorite bands, I have songs by them that I do not like and I don't ever go out of my way to listen to. Now, do you think listening to a full album where you, that song will appear might over time make you appreciate that song or make make you realize why other people like it and you don't? Um, I do think that's why it is important to listen to albums every now and again, because, you know, even, you know, my girlfriend, I'll, I'll play a full album and there'll be a song and she's like, I don't remember that song. And I, I kind of like it. And I'm like, yeah. And then she'll kind of listen to it on her own and then it'll end up on her playlist. And I, and I was like, well, you would have, you know, might not have re- ever remember that song if I hadn't played the album. But at the same time, I also just think she, unless she's at a concert, she maybe doesn't want to hear an artist for an hour, you know, 45 minutes, an album's length. You know, some people like to really hear variety and it depends on how, I guess, how many different styles of music you listen to, how many different artists or bands you listen to. Um, because, yeah, some people just like what they like. And sometimes that's not, every, and there's some, I feel like, you and I are people in this category of people who when they like a band, they usually like everything that band does. At least I'm that way. I don't think you're that way as much. For example, you love Ben Folds five and you know, like all what four of their albums, including like some of their B sides, but you don't really necessarily listen to a lot of Ben Folds soul stuff where I do. I love his, I mind even like a soul stuff more than Ben Folds five. Um, Outrageous. (laughs) That'll be an episode for another day, but um, and some people don't do that. Some people don't care enough to investigate further into a band, even if they like a handful of their songs. Some people only like a greatest hits album as opposed to a normal album. And that'll be another episode for another day because that's this whole other discussion. So I do think there's merit to the people who like, like listen to the playlist. And we were talking about earlier, it also depends on the mood. Like I don't go to a lot of parties, but I know you hang out with friends a lot. When you hang out with your friends, a lot of time, if you're listening to music out loud, it's a variety, right? It's not just an album. Yeah, yeah, and I, and I, you know, I'm guessing the reason for that is because, let's say you put on like a Duran Duran album, not everyone in the room is going to gel with you know, forty minutes of that. Um, granted, though, I find oftentimes the songs that they pick are still kind of in the same genre. Not not always, but I've had that you know have had that happen where. It might as well have been an album, and I wouldn't really have known the difference, maybe even. Yeah, it it is interesting to, you know, and like I said, that's just one little part of the discussion because, um, you know, another a way that people love listening to music is live, going to a concert, you know. And I, have over the years, I've had kind of mixed feelings of concerts. You know, when I was younger, going to concerts were really fun. And whether I was either up front in the first row or whether I was in the middle or the far back nowadays. And again, this is another, I'm, we're trying not to get too deep into any of these, these small little topics because they could be topics for another episode one day, but you know, there's so much fights over, you know, pricing when it comes to tickets, we're not going to even get into that, but just the actually seeing a band live. What do you feel about? How do you feel about that? Do you like going to see bands live? Because some people would say that's the best. There's some people who say, but like they'll say, oh, the best way to listen to music is seeing a band live or an artist live. Like they'll say, oh, this band is better live than in the studio. Like, what do you feel about that? There's so many variables that come along with a live performance. Um, and the variables that I have experienced now, um, because I, I played a couple shows in Seattle, um, one this month and one last month. And just something that I think a lot of people who maybe don't go to a lot of concerts or people that aren't really into necessarily listening to music or recording music and whatnot. But like the first game we did, the, the the live mix was not very good. And that really kind of sucked in the crowd. It kind of, you know, kind of made the performers not, you know, as excited. But the next gig, the sound was great and everyone was into it. Everyone loved it. The energy was there. Um and, you know, last year, uh, my friend Ishan took me to see some metal bands. And uh, even though I wouldn't listen to probably more than a couple metal songs at a time, like it was fun, you know, when the band sounded great and the mix sounded great. Um, but, you know, you go to the, let's say you see your band and you love the singer of it. But the whole time you can't hear the singer over the drums. That kind of may ruin your experience a bit. Um, 
and because we're talking about listening to new music, I'm not really focusing on the, oh, I can't see the band, or like you said, the pricing. But just purely from, you know, um, an audio point of view, I would say there's a lot of variables. But at its best, though, I think the energy can really be unique and one of a kind. You're there seeing a performance that anyone outside of that room is not experiencing. Um, additionally, I would say too, a lot of the band's character may, you know, also come out more during the performance, whether it's kind of just improv, you know, you can kind of maybe hear the chemistry in a new light. Um, so there's so many variables, but I would say at its best, live music probably is the, the kind of the ultimate experience, the pinnacle of it. Um, I know you've said you've been going to a lot of concerts. I know you have been for a while. Do you agree? Do you see different? I I think it it, it is kind of based on the experience you have. I, I like you said, there's a lot of variables. I think when a concert concert is at its best, a show can it can leave you with like a a very surreal kind of cathartic moment, like an almost out of body experience. Which I also get listening to an album, so I wouldn't say I like live music better because I I would say almost I prefer listening to music at home in my own house, my own room. What no matter what the setup is, you know, headphones, speakers, vinyl, streaming, like there's just some I I think when I'm like in the mood for music, I almost I don't want to necessarily be by myself, but I can just have one of those like feeling high moments with just a song, right. Or just an album or, or whatever. But I do think of a concert, like if the band or the artist is, is really tight, they're playing well, the, you know, like you said, the audio is really crystal clear, um, you know, and they play like your favorite song. So they play them in a great order. I do, I do feel like I can walk away and go, that was fantastic. You know, when I saw Pearl Jam for the first time, even though I do think the set list, especially for them was a little predictable. They were kind of playing their great, almost like a greatest hits. Um, they threw in some deep cuts, but just the vibe, like even hearing songs live that I've heard a hundred times on my iPod growing up, like even flow or alive. Like those were like huge moments when I saw them in person. Um, and I've had a lot of shows like that, you know, somewhat recently I, last year um, when I saw spoon, at back-to-back -back live shows uh, for the first time ever it was they were fantastic there was just a great energy to both shows and both shows had different kind of experiences one felt like at the set list was better but the other show they felt like they were having more fun and the sound was better so it was kind of like the best of both worlds in a sense and you know i saw death cab i think death cab was our most recent concert and they were they were they were better live than I was expecting them to be. And I had seen them live once before, but it was when I was younger and I didn't really know much of their music. So now knowing all their music, seeing them live, they were fantastic. Like they just, you know, and it all really depends, too, on like how a band performs live, because some bands like to perform not like on the CD or on their albums, like Counting Crows, for example, their lead singer, Adam Duritz, he he'll never sing the same melody twice. He's always singing. And I don't know why he does that. I just, when he performs live, he's in a totally different state of mind. He'll add lyrics. He'll take away lyrics. He, he'll, you can't sing along with him live almost because he's singing it different every time. Some people hate that. Some people love that. Uh, and then some people, when they play live, some bands, they play it just like on the album, but that's almost boring because they're not adding any extra pizzazz to it, you know? Um, right. But I'm uh, curious, I, I, has, has there ever been a, sh is there a show that you've been to where you felt like that out of body experience? Um, geez, I'm trying to think now. Well, definitely being young, and um, I saw a couple of the the Leslie Pool side projects because Primus wasn't touring at the time. Um, I think they're on hiatus or whatever they want to call it. Um, and so being young and kind of seeing this musicianship, uh, and seeing, for example, one of them was this duo to twang, which was him playing on a his bass Joe, as they call it, bass banjo, and just a, you know, guy playing like side guitar. Um, you know, seeing how this idol of mine, who's such an amazing musician and performer, doing something kind of reserved, but something quite intimate, you know, it's just two of them sitting on chairs close up like that right there. Like, I felt like I learned so much just being there. 
Um, now that I'm older and I've been to more concerts and, you know, whatnot, as far as having those magical moments, they're they're definitely there, but they're in different ways. So it may be something that maybe relates more to the craft, whether, you know, oh, this dude's playing these great, you know, guitar licks or, oh, you know, this performer's got great presence. But I, I think the most magical experiences kind of comes from the harmony of the band and not vocal harmony necessarily, but just kind of, you know, the connection they all have, how they kind of communicate on stage. Um, so, for example, as much as I love seeing, you know, the Mark Lanigan band perform um, and they sound they sounded, you know, fantastic. It wasn't as a magical experience as seeing uh, Brian Wilson live with the zombies. Um it was great seeing the zombies perform because even though they were old and looked like zombies, they sounded great. They still had energy and passion. And then seeing um, Brian Wilson perform, um, you know, his performances now as he's quite old are kind of a mixture of him singing when he feels like it and kind of staring at the ceiling. But seeing his band have admiration and love for him and support and you know, like just because they kind of had to definitely fill in for him at times, it, it felt like willing. It felt like, you know, we're making music, we're playing songs we like, you know, we're creating something magical here. So a concert like that really touched me in a way and kind of gave me that, you know, out of body feeling like, whoa, this, you know, this transcends my definition of music even. Yeah, that's a good point. I, I, I the last thing I'll say about concerts is what will kill a cons for me is the people around you. And that's oh. the only reason. And getting older, I think it's worse when you're younger. You don't care when you're older. You start caring more about those type of things. And also when you're older too. You're just like, I don't want to stand for a whole two hours at a show. But even more so than that, it's just the people around me. And if there's like a, like, like you were talking about like intimate moments and then someone next to you is like, talking on their phone or they're talking to people around you that which is terrible like we saw you know glenn hansard perform solo well two years ago i think and he played at a fairly small venue that has a bar attached to it like a lot of smaller venues do and he had to stop during one of his songs because people at the bar would not stop talking and you could tell he was mad and he even did a little speech or he's like you guys came to see me so shut up you know and he and like, he was nicer than that, but he you could tell he was mad. And I think he played a shorter show because he just didn't like the audience. And and that's one thing that one reason why I think I still prefer listening to music at home or just to myself as opposed to live is people around you. If you have a bad crowd, it just sucks because some people some people go to a concert. Not knowing a band's, you know, songs and not necessarily, you know. And that, and that doesn't mean that those people are bad because some people go to shows not knowing the bands and just listening to them. Like, you know, our dad, he'll go to shows with his friend Steve. And, you know, sometimes neither of them will know the band they're seeing. They're just, you know, oh, it was a cheap show nearby. You know, they go to Seattle, they go see the show and they have a fun time, but they're respectful. They, they're not like talking during the show. Like they just, and that's, that's a cool way to experience a band for the first time as live. And there's a couple bands I'm into now because I saw them live for the first time. One of them being Cold War Kids. Never heard of them until I saw them um, playing at a festival with the Killers, which happened to be my first concert ever. And um, that's a cool way to get into a band. But then there's some people who just like go to a show with their friends and I, and then they like talk during the songs. And then I, that's when they, I think they ruin it for everyone. Yeah, I, I, I definitely agree. Or like when you can't hear the singer because the dude next to you think he's the singer, which, which I get it. There's a time for that. There definitely is. I'm not actually hating fully on that. Um, One more point I have to make before a different point I wanted to make um, regarding live performance versus like, you know, listening at home is I think some songs when when they're recorded, you know, it's done in a delicate way. It's not like there's anyone that they're trying to keep entertained. So I definitely think maybe, you know, some ballads or so maybe um, maybe a little bit deeper songs. Sometimes that gets lost in the translation because they're trying to, you know, have good stage presence. They're trying to keep people entertained. Um, something that I thought was cool is I've seen a lot of live videos of STP. And sometimes they'll do like a little acoustic set in the middle of their set. So they'll bring out like some stools 
bring out the acoustic guitar. They'll bring a smaller drum kit to the front of the stage. Um, and I thought that was really cool, creating an acoustic environment within your concert. Um, but there was a point I wanted to make that I saw from a video uh, of Samurai Guitarist. He was talking Great about... YouTuber, by the way. I don't watch all his videos all the time, but the few videos I watched of him, he great, great guy, like great, you know, he plays music, but he also talks about music kind of like we are now. And he always has great input. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely agreed. Um, and he was doing one of like his Q and a type things. And he was talking about his, you know, someone asked him, what's your favorite way to listen to music? And he made the argument for the CD being the best way to listen to a music. Um, and I was kind of like, mm, this seems kind of this seems kind of a little clickbaity, but he had a good reason actually. He was talking about the times when he would be in his car driving, um, and you would have a CD, and you'd keep the CD or a couple CDs in your car, you know, just because you don't want to change the CD all the time. So on your commutes, on your drives to places, you're listening to like the same album, you know, repeatedly, and by doing so, you kind of you know, that music kind of stays with you more. You pick up on the details more. Um, you know, you just start to love all the quirks of it and whatnot. Um, and I think I can relate to that. I definitely remember listening to a lot of Soundgarden uh, when dad would drive us around um, and whatnot. Like, so I thought that was actually a really good point. And I do have to say that that experience of listening to music that way definitely has shaped, you know, my, I don't know what you call it, my, my musical journey. Yeah, that's a really good point because that was something I wanted to bring up. And I think kind of the last point to kind of talk about, and I'm going to call it the nostalgia effect because, you know, he said CDs because he's someone that's, you know, he's definitely a little older than us, a little older than me. And, you know, he, he was not of that vinyl era. He was in the era of like CDs and so were we, you know, like, <clears throat> even though, you know, growing up, one of my fondest memories was for my birthday, getting the iPod um, classic, which right. by Put far 20,000 songs on it. Yeah, that's the best iPod ever. And I would I would just load that up. I had at one point like 2000 songs, uh, mostly a ton of Pearl Jam live concerts. But um, and that thing was the best. But. I think nostalgia is is what kind of like for example like our parents they for them it might be records you know that's you know what they remember listening to the most a lot of people it's the radio you know I know in Spoon's latest record they have a song called on the radio and he's really singing about the love of radio and how when he was younger that was like magic to him was the radio and listening to bands and people he's never heard of before for the first time but for not but you know, for, for me, radio was never a huge thing. And I actually don't really like the radio because I just, I'm not someone that wants to hear the same songs over and over again. I, I do like to hear, want variety and I love deep cuts. I love songs that aren't picked for singles. Do you ever feel like with like streaming services that like you have too many options that you don't, you can't um, decide what to listen to? Cause I get that way. If I don't actually like tell well, myself, Oh, yes, I've been meaning to listen to this or something. Yes. And that's why sometimes I will listen to those curated playlists that you were talking about where they, Spotify will say like, here's just a random mix of songs from bands that you've been listening to a lot recently. Or sometimes they'll even say, here are bands that we've noticed you've not listened to that we think you will like. That's great too. You know, um, especially if I'm like in a mood where I feel like I haven't, I need to hear something different, something new. Um, but yeah, the nostalgia factor, like, you know, I remember, and I'm, I'm sure I've told the story before on the podcast and I'm sure I'll tell it many times again. One of my earliest memories just just as a kid was our parents playing um certain cds in the car when i was you know strapped in my you know car seat in the back and hearing albums like pearl gems versus or the red hot chili peppers one hot minute for the first Represent. time those are like yeah, those are you know some of my like fondest and earliest memories of music and yeah cds you know that's what i i had a cd collection before i, I have my vinyl collection now and um, I remember you and I both had, you know, um, different like boom boxes at the time that could play cassettes and CDs and the radio. So you had a little bit of all three. And I remember when I was younger, I would like, um, you know, have a cassette and I would record songs off the radio. And that's how, you know, you would make pretty much playlists nowadays. 
back then you would use a cassette and you would just tape songs off the radio, which was always fun. Uh, and then when streaming and like, you know, MP3s became a thing, it was making your own burn CDs. It was like a playlist, but you'd put it on a CD. And, you know, I remember, I'm sure you remember too, the you, you, me and our sister Tessa, you know, when we were younger, like during the summer when we were out of school, we would like make a playlist of what we consider to be summer songs. And and that's another thing. And we won't get into too much this episode because I do think it could be a separate episode. I sometimes like to associate songs with seasons. The song to me feels like a winter song. This song feels to me like a fall song, summer song. Um, and we'd make a summer playlist and we would just put songs on it that from different bands we liked that we felt were like summer songs. And then we'd have that on our iPod and on iTunes and we'd play that throughout the summer when we were like playing games outside or whatever. So I do think the nostalgia factor is huge when you listen to music. I think people are going to gravitate towards the type of medium that they used growing up, you know, whether CDs or cassettes. Uh, and they'll always just, I think people have a place in their heart for that, you know? Yeah. Because what does music do? It makes you feel. And if, you know, I think that kind of goes hand in hand with nostalgia. Yeah. Like I'll never forget when you would use your moonbox and play weird Al CDs and the Goo Goo Dolls. We don't talk about that. Okay. No, we don't talk about your Nick Lachey CD that you used to have. Dude, I don't even remember how any of those songs go. <laughs> I don't know how any of them. But, well, hey, hey, you were busting a NSYNC for a while, though, huh? Well, yeah. And then I remember that one of the first CDs I bought with my own money was uh, Nickelback's For All the Right Reasons. Nickelback? Underrated. Or, no, overhated. <laughs> there we go. That's, that's the better word. Well, I guess if something is... I think if something's overhated, it could be considered underrated. I, but it, it's there's probably a slight difference. Like, for example, underrated versus overlooked. Yeah, kind of true. the same effect, but. But yeah, you know, I, I think, you know, we'll there's so many great there's so many different ways to listen to music. I think that's one of the things I love about music and, you know, for different other things, you know, like reading, you know, people use books, but then some people do, you know, their Kindles and read books on their phones and on audio books. Yeah. Playing games. Now there's, you know, for a while now there's handheld games, there's different consoles, computers. So, but music, I, there's just so many different ways, you know, like the actual, you know, CD, vinyl, and tapes, radio, but then there's like listening to music live and, and the different types of music you listen to when you listen to it, why you listen to it. And I think what you said was great was you listen to music to feel. And I think that's going to change on a daily basis, on an hourly basis, you know. Mid song when you're like, OK, enough of this and you turn it off. I saw people do that. I try not to do that. I But there are I, I do. I, I've been uh, I can't remember who. I think I was in the car one time with a friend and I remember like halfway through a song, he like changed it. And I was like, why would you change it? And he was like, oh, I was just. I, I got to the part I liked and I was like, I'll <laughs> and I was like, what? I, I have I, special exceptions, but I try not to do that either. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't know if I'd ever do that. But yeah, some some people like that's again, another reason I think music is the best is because there's just so many different ways to view it and to listen to it. So but I, I think we'll wrap it up here because like I said, there's so many different topics in, in this broad topic that can be their own episodes. Um, and we'll definitely be doing more episodes like this down the road where we're not focusing on a particular band or song or album because, you know, you and I can can talk hours and hours on even just one song. Um, but sometimes it's nice to just talk about music as a whole. So we'll definitely have more episodes like this. Uh, next week's episode actually will kind of be similar in the sense that we're not going to be talking about a, a particular album or song. We're going to be talking about an artist, a band, um, it's going to be a little bit of like an appreciation episode for a particular band. So did we get a teaser or no? Um, or, or a band no, reveal, I suppose, the, not a teaser. <laughs> well, I'll give you a teaser. The, the teaser is you'll know the band in one week. So until then, thank you for listening and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>